I fully understand what a deal looks like. I've been involved in three of these deals actually over the past um, eight months or so. Sure. And um, especially if you are a VC funded startup and you're burning money and eventually you're not going to get a bridge round or a next round of investment or so forth and you're looking to close. Mm. So um, I know that EBITDA is definitely not going to be positive and mm. it's not going to be an incredible deal for it. So yeah. What would you recommend, uh, let's say, VC funded startups that have, you know, three, four, five, six months of lifeline uh, to do to position themselves for the best kind of strategic exit here? Well, that's a that's a great question. I can only tell you what I've seen on a couple of occasions mm-hmm. with live deals I'm working on. Um, and I do think that we're going to get positive results. So I think first and foremost, you need to get the business it, it depends on uh, the type of exit you're looking for and the target buyer. If you're looking for a financial buyer versus a strategic buyer, first decide what type of exit you're going for. And in the cases that I'm working with now, they're more financial buyers. So yeah. they care purely on, of course, the product, but more so on the, the fundamental financials of the business. So in the case of, of, of this one of the live deals I'm working on right now, like they kind of got their P&L in order, right? They got their, their operating costs in order. Um, they um, unfortunately had to let people go um, and they are running the business as a standalone to maintain the current customer base and its current cash flows. Um, so they've, they've, you know, stripped it down to not the bare minimum, but to the... Um, cost base which will allow for the business to maintain its current customers and for the product to continue in a stable way in a strong way um, and simply like we obviously have the monthly p l for, for since that restructure um, and you know that's how we're fundamentally valuing the business and, and selling the business based on that value now of course you know the buyer challenges that and and rightly so um but you know in in the cases where the 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 product is strong um and and the quality of the of the SaaS product or you know whatever business it is of course a buyer will be willing to look over that um or look over the 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 current financial state of the business if there's you know some upside for them um so yeah I, i i think that of course you need to You know, if I was a VC and I was an investment associate with portfolio companies and I had to, you know, now start thinking about next decisions, um, of course, you, you keep you keep your winners. And then there's probably two other categories of the non winners. And and those are, you know, do I um, either a liquidate it completely or B, do I keep the business running as a standalone um, and as a going concern? Um, strip it back to its 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 core roots, and then look to exit um, to to a financial buyer. Great points, um, and definitely what we're seeing here. And again, going through some of this uh, myself, both as a as a founder, as someone working with VCs, as um, a business advisor working with businesses going through restructuring, yeah. as an agency owner whose clients are doing mass layoffs and then restructuring and all that, or pivoting or merging or consolidating or branching out. There's a lot of that going on in the market. Mm. And our go-to is also switching to, so first off in terms of evaluation, moving to the so-called adjusted profitability, yeah. meaning uh, theoretically, if we do all these cuts, what would the p and look like? Yeah. And then actually executing upon that. Because as you said, it's essentially, we are either liquidating everything or we're cutting almost down to the basics to yeah. maintain and keep it as a, Honestly, as a cash cow at some point, because it yeah. could be a profitable business. It could just stick around and it's well, a safe investment. Yeah, like this business I'm working on right now, like the founders attempted to, yeah, they're, they're, they're also like, hey, we stripped it back. It's it's growing uh, organically, by the way. It's getting a lot of inbound customers. This business was made for probably more to be bootstrapped um, yeah. and grow sustainably. and. They're seeing month like net um, net positive uh, you know retention and so and that's completely stripping it back. So I think that um, you can still have these profitable businesses without the backing of a VC that is attractive to another type of buyer. 
Um, and I think earlier I was talking more about a financial buyer. I mean, that's not to say that if you're a VC, um, you know, associate and you're looking to, to see what you should do with these portfolio companies, of course, you should also explore strategic options, yeah. right? Like, let's not pretend that that's also a great result and pot potentially a better one if you can get a really good multiple. Um, but it also depends on time. It depends on effort. Um, you know, trying to get a, a deal done with a strategic buyer is higher risk in my view. It takes a lot more time. You need a lot more of like, let's say, a magic click to happen. Um, so yeah, you've just got to weigh it up. And I guess that's the beauty of the next 12 months. I think it's a super exciting next 12 months. 